I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna start taking a look at triggers or data macros as they're called in Microsoft Access. And we're gonna have a look at how data macros work, how you can find out where to create them, and also uh, take a look at some of the gotchas and things like that that you might have when you create a data macro in your database. Let's get to it. Looking for downloads of the files used in these videos? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. So in every Access database file, there's essentially two parts to it. There's a front-end component and there's a back-end component which has all of its database stuff in it. And the two layers kind of talk to each other in a very tightly integrated way and we've got our forms, reports, macros, and VBA in the front end and our engine tables and queries in the back end. And our back end also contains our data macros. Now the whole thing is tied together tightly by DAO or ADODB uh, or ODBC if you're using ODBC. But those macros you see on the front end are not the same as the macros that you see in the back end because those are tightly integrated with the ACE database engine and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today are data macros which are similar to triggers that you would find on other database systems. And what do triggers do? Well triggers allow you to have events that happen inside of your relational database management system that you can trigger in order to update data in other parts of your database so that you can have things like notification or a log or, or all kinds of things like that. For example, if you wanted to create a log record every time the price of an item in another table was updated, you could do that. So as you could see, there are thousands of ways that data macros could be used. And in fact, triggers are used for all kinds of things in the real world. And one of the great things about data macros is that they belong to the database itself. And so even if you have another front end attached to your access database, data macros will still fire, whereas VBA macros would not. And so today our goal is to create a simple uh, after insert macro that's going to create a new record in a log table or an event table that we can uh, view every time uh, there's a, a record inserted into our case table. So we're going to create a new case management table here. So we'll we'll create a table of cases that are managed by say case workers and we'll put an ID in there and we're going to put a case number and a case worker um, and that should be enough for our demonstration today. So I'll just create a very simple table here and, uh, and I'll put a case date on there as well uh, so that we have a date for that case. And that should be good enough for now. I'll close it. I'll say, do I want to save changes? And I'll give this, I'll call this one TBL case and we'll get this uh, message here and I'll say yes so that it takes my auto number as a primary key and that's going to give us a very simple table with some cases in it and uh, we'll create another table uh, for events uh, and we'll create one for users too but first we'll go ahead and create an event table a very simple table we'll just put an event description in there uh, so we'll have our ID as an auto number we'll have event description and uh, and we'll put a date stamp on there as well and we'll demonstrate how to fill um, the event description field as well as the date stamp field uh, when our trigger goes and I'll, I'll right click and I'll put that primary key on there for our auto number and uh, and then I'll save this one as TBL event uh, using uh, the LNC naming convention uh, if you'd like to see a video on that, please check out the card up above here. I discussed uh, the uh, Lazinski naming convention and uh, we can use that today. 
So I'm gonna say uh, ID for my auto number. This is gonna be like a, a user, a current user table or query you might have in your database. Wherever you look up your currently logged in user, and some of you might have that in a variable or in VBA uh, somewhere, which can be made to work with uh, data macro, uh, but will not work in all cases, especially if you have a different kind of front end, like a .NET front end or something like that. Um, but the, the data macros will work uh, if you have it all in tables or queries, uh, meaning uh, you, you're getting all of your data from your tables or queries. So we have our, our event table and our current table there and our case table. Um, and so those are the three tables we're going to use today. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we'll put in a current user here. I'm just going to put in some name. I'll just put John Doe. And, uh, and now we've got a query. Now one of the tricks is I'm using a table here today, but in your database, if you can make a query that looks up something specific, it makes data macros easy to use because data macros are tightly integrated with the back end. Now we're gonna create an event record each time there's a new case put into our TBL case uh, table here. And uh, right now it's just a, a generic table that we created um, and we can put a row in there. Uh, we'll call it case 100 and the case worker is Sarah and we'll put a case date on there and, uh, and that'll, that'll uh, give us one row. And you'll notice that nothing happens obviously uh, because all we've done is insert a new record into our uh, case table and our event. Um, table doesn't have anything in it um, because we didn't create a macro yet. Now in order to do that you can see I've got this table open and I actually don't have it in design view or anything. Um, I'm just going to go over and you can find under table tools here um, you can find um, the ribbon uh, called table and you can see there's all these different events here. We've got a before change, before delete, so you can stop somebody from deleting if there's certain, uh, you know, things about the data. You can uh, do an after insert or after update of a particular record on a table, and after delete, like if somebody deletes a record, you can log that. Now there's this named macro section over here, and we're going to cover that in another uh, episode. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these events here and we're going to use the after update event. And what we're going to do is we want to have a new record in our event table every time a new case is created in the case table. And so what we're going to do is you can see when I, cr when I clicked on that you could see that we have all these options here in the drop down. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to choose um, the create record uh, selection and that's going to help us create a new record and of course if we're going to create a new record well what's in the drop down of course it's all of our tables that we have in our database and so I'm going to choose that TBL event so that I can create a new record in that table uh, each time there's an insert in this table and so I can go ahead and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose set field and uh, what that's going to do is it allows us to choose the field we want to update in that target table and so I'm going to put uh, in event description I'm going to put new case was added and so in the name you put the name of the field and in the value you put the value that you want uh, to be added into that table and then I can close and uh, save uh, and that will save the the macro there and now we have a macro added to our table we have a data macro there so trigger uh, basically and so I'll go ahead and I'll create case number 101 for Jim and now if I open my event table uh, I'll double click on that and you can see now we've got a value in our event table it says new case was added and uh, so that's great so we were able to add that uh, new record just by doing the insert the ID was an auto number on that 
table on the event table so we didn't have to do anything there but you will notice that the date was missing um, so I'll create 102 and and I'll put that was added by Robert or pardon me the caseworker is Robert and uh, and I'll put the case date for that one and then if I go back to my event table you can see another row was added so we know what's going on there uh, but but we're still missing our, our date stamp field and so what we can do is we can go back to our our table uh, ribbon and we'll click on that after insert and you can see how these are kind of grouped together when I click in here we got our create record here and we've set one field and that belongs to that create uh, record uh, in TBL event and I can add another one if I want by specifying another set field selection and this time I'm going to put the name of the field is our date stamp and I'll put the value equals now 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 the now uh, function is available in the data macros in the back end and it's also available in the front end but don't get confused because this is uh, not the VBA function uh, for the front end that's being executed here. This is a back end macro function. And so now when I add a new record, number 103 for Julie, and I go back to my event table, now you can see both of those fields are updated. And you know, this is needs to be much wider. There we go. So now we've got our, our um, selection. Uh, we've added a new case and we know the date stamp for when that record was added and that'll be very handy in our database. Now if I want to look at something else in the database as I was mentioning before it's very handy to have uh, certain things in a query or in a table uh, because that makes it at the database layer there and we can go ahead and look at look up that value so that was the current user table uh, or some other value if you were looking up something else and we can look up that value uh, by by adding a new uh, section to our macro and the way we're going to do that is by specifying add new action and we're going to select in that list that this is going off the bottom of the screen here but we're going to choose the look up a record in uh, selection and so now we can we can look up a value and we're going to do that we're going to look up a record in our tbl current and i'll leave the where condition out for now we can explore that a bit more in our uh, upcoming episodes but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to look up the, the value. We're going to assume that's like a single row table that we just update when the user logs in or something like that. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the value and we're going to put it into a variable. Now, the set local variable um, section of the, of the macro uh, sets a local variable in the database and please note that this is not the same as set temp var or using temp var in uh, access itself this is a database la layer variable and we're going to create it with the name current user and we're going to grab the expression being tbl current dot current user because we looked up that value uh, uh, in our macro here so I want to use this current user variable in the expression when I say new record was added because I want to say new record was added by so-and-so. And so in order to do that, we need to move our look up a record uh, part of the macro. We need to move that up to the top so that we look up the variable before we create a record in. And so you can move sections of your macro up and down using the little green arrows on the right so that they execute in a particular order and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move those sections of the of the macro up and i'm going to move it up all the way here so it might take a second here just to to scooch those all the way up to the top and there we go so now we have look up a record in tbl current and that's going to execute 
and it's going to get that that current user uh, the entry in the current user field of TBL current it's going to load it into the variable current user and then now we can use that variable value in our set field section uh, and we can concatenate it onto the uh, new case was added and in order to do that we can just click on that section of the macro and the text box will show up there and then we can use our concatenation uh, to say new case was added by and then we can put in our variable name uh, that we're using uh, on the back end uh, local variable and so if I save that and I can go to 104 here adding a new record again um, and I'll say this is uh, for caseworker Sam and now if I open the event table hopefully oh there we go so we have new case was added by John Doe and we can see the date stamp uh, that that was added at the time that that was added and so this is very very handy and this is an after insert uh, data macro and is one of the many ways that you can use data macros and if you guys are interested in seeing more about data macros uh, please make sure to comment below uh, and if you have a specific situation where you want to add a sort of a data update like that of uh, when one field is updated then another field gets updated in another part of the database or something like that please make sure to put that in the comment section below. And you can also get to the data macros by going into the design of the table and you can look under the create data macros uh, selection on the ribbon there under table design and that will get you to the same selections that we had in our example today. Looking for programming resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.